Hi, my name is Liam, technical manager here at Aprima. I'd like to thank you for your interaction on our previous technical video. After looking through your emails, we've decided to discuss the DMSS software by Dower, the digital mobile surveillance system, currently available on Android or iOS devices. So for Android, you're going to be using the GS GDMSS software, and for iOS, you're going to be using the IDMSS software. We're just going to get this set up, and we'll go through it together. I'm just going to utilize the screen record on my Android device. Uh, we're going to do this instead of picture in picture because the picture in picture does partially obscure some of the icons on the screen. So I have GDMSS Plus installed on this device. And the reason I have this is because it gives us the ability to use push notifications. And we'll cover that off in a second. So what we do is we enter the device. Um, and top left hand corner is our main menu of the app itself. So we have live preview, playback, uh, cloud storage, message center, device manager, door and alarm control. Uh, the alarm control functionality is if you're going to utilize any of the DAO alarm modules. The door is if you're going to utilize any of the VDP or VTO functions, which gives, also gives the ability for push notifications when you're out and about. Device manager, message center, playback and live view. Across the bottom, you have favorites, files, and settings. And the settings tab is quite helpful because it tells you a bit about the app itself. So if you go into the about, um, it tells you what version the app is running. I know the GDMSS is going to have an update at some point this month to have a slightly better IVSS functionality with push notifications. We have protection, which gives us the ability to pin protect the app itself. Local configuration, just gives us the options for PTZ speeds. Capture mode, so if you're doing a screenshot, um, it, that's the amount of times it does a screenshot. Uh, general settings again, autoplay on Wi-Fi, so you can save your data while I've done about. And the help tab is 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 probably one of the most uh, functional parts of this section. Is if you can click any particular option that you're interested in, click live preview. It will explain step by step what they actually mean in the icon, so you're not just guessing. Um, and the ability to look um, and familiarise yourself with the content in the app, as you can see, is is quite thorough. Um, it's done by each particular section, so live view, playback, cloud storage, device manager. It is quite thorough, so if you need to um, interrogate that any further, you have the ability to do so. So we go back to the main menu, and we go to the device manager. So in the device manager, top right hand corner is when you do any of the add functions throughout the app, you'll notice this. Um, we have the plus function, hit the plus function. Gives us the option to add a device, whether it be camera, door, alarm, or online search. The online search is basically going to search your network locally and look for any devices. Um, so we're going to add a CCTV system, so we'll click camera. Whether it be a wired or Wi-Fi device, ours is going to be hard. Wired is CCTV system. Is how you connect via PTP, IP domain, or a few DNS options. So we're going to use PTP for today um, and add this. So give the site a name, so we call this test for today. Um, you can utilize the correct login credentials. Oop. Make sure they're right. Type them in. I know you can see what they are when I've typed them in, but it's only for test and demonstration purposes. That will be removed shortly. So the serial number is what we're interested in when using P2P. You can either type that in, or as you can see, there's a QR code scan on the right hand side. If you hit that, it will then open up the camera on your mobile phone. And then scan the C1 of the device. As you can see, is relatively quick. Um, I've got a web page of the device open in the P2P tab. You can also do this from the front end of the recorder, whether it be an XVR or Dower MVR. And just go into the main menu, network, P2P, or easy for AP tab, and it will then give you that option. If you hit start live preview, that then starts to pull the configuration through the device itself. I currently only have three cameras connected to the system, um, which is which is going to work quite well for this demonstration purposes. Um, if I want to utilize anything and go in and interrogate the image a little bit more, I can double tap that and make that full screen. Um, this is currently set to pull through on substream only, because if you're out and about, you may not have a very good signal. Um, so it just pulls through the, the substream through a little bit faster than it would with the mainstream due to the image quality. But if you want to change that, the icons across the middle of the screen here, if I hit the little picture of a monitor with the mountains inside, as you can see, that's set to substream. If I hit the mainstream option, a few seconds it will then pull through a slightly obviously the full resolution that you've set um what i can do here is this i've got a, um, a fish eye connected across the bottom row the furthest left icon is for PTZ functionality so if i had a PTZ connected i could obviously uh, control that got trip the presets and zoom in zoom out and so on and so forth but as i have a fish eye connected we'll i'll show you how to utilize this so the second icon in is the fish id warp if you hit that as you can see the image changes it is the ability to interrogate the image a lot more you can do this in playback or live view 
which is a nice little feature to have, especially when you're out and about showing your customers. You can cover a large area with one camera. Um, as you can hit the other options, it changes, gives you the ability to change the color palette, your hue and saturation. Um, if you had auto tracking and smart tracking, you can hit this option here. Um, obviously, this the yeah, cameras that I don't support smart tracking. You have the wiper, light, and also you can control the outputs of the, of the device that's associated with your um, credentials. So you hit this, it gives you the ability to control the alarm output functions, whether it be automatic, manual, or, cl or close. So automatic is if it's associated with anything in your setup of your device. Uh, manual is if you can toggle it yourself, and close means it just is totally off. Um, what you can do, if I open this camera back up again, if I want to take a snapshot of something that's going on, if I hit the little camera icon in the centre, as you can hear, it will take three individual snapshots and save them to the local files of the device, so you can utilise that later on by exporting that if you need if required. If I want to record the video, again, we'll pick a different camera for this. If I open this camera here, if I hit the little video camcorder icon, as you can see, is now the record light that's coming on the top left-hand side. That's now recording away. Once I've finished, I can hit that again. That has now stopped recorded. So if I add an audio system connected to this, whether it be a PA or the HDMI that's connected to a, a monitor from the recorder itself, if I press and hold the microphone icon, it gives me the option to audio talk. I can then pick the device associated. So we'll pick test for this. I can talk then that would broadcast the audio via the HDMI or via the PA system, so out of our monitoring, etc. Once I finish, if I hit the microphone, it'll then take that back out. What I can do as well is see the number four on the right hand side icons. If I hit that, it gives me the option to change the screen split to a four to a nine or sixteen way split. Depending on obviously the size of your recorder or devices associated, that you can utilize that and set that up as per your requirements. The little star icon is quite helpful, so you can set up favourites. So if you have multiple sites and you want specific cameras for multiple sites, you can set that up. I'll cover that off in a second. So if I go into my menu, I've got favourites in the bottom left hand corner. If I hit that, we have one currently set up. I'll just remove this. Top top right hand side again is the plus symbol. If you enter that, I'll call this arm for now. As you can see, I've got a group now created called Arm. And then I associate any camera groups or any recorders into this favourites. There's my list of devices. Um, so we'll pick the fisheye, we'll pick the Prima demo stuff, um, we'll have a thermal and a visual. Um, that'll do for now, press complete. There's the three cameras associated with my view. If I head back, go back to my live preview, top right hand corner again. There's a drop down, as you can see, this is my, this is my local devices that I've associated, the four devices, and also my favourites groups. So if I hit that, as you can see, it highlights where it's pulling the images from. Press start live preview. Give it a few seconds and then it'll pull through the live images. Great little feature. Um, if I hit my little favorites icon there, as you can see, it tells me Alan when I got three cameras currently associated with that view. If I don't want to utilize that view, I can untick that, pick the test site that we could set up for today. It will then just pull through them specific cameras from that site. What you can do, obviously, you see we did a snapshot. Yeah. Go into the main menu itself, go into files, there's the video that we recorded and also the top right hand side gives you the option to go to the screenshots. So there's the three dedicated snapshots that we took earlier on. You can set that up to be less or more depending on your requirements. So what we'll utilise here now as we'll be able to set up is the message centre. So we'll have push notifications, go into the main menu, go to the message centre. Currently you have no notifications set up. So on the ca um, camera system we have set up here, I have a facial detection camera set up. What I will do, I will pick that top right hand corner, we pick the plus. As you can see, they're all currently closed, we have nothing associated with this. Pick my device, as you can see it's currently turned off, I will turn that on. Give me a push type, whether it be live, preview, video or image, depending on how you're going to use this via IVS. Um, I'm going to use for, for facial today for this as we have them currently set up. So we have face alarm. Um, my camera I'm going to pick for this is face detection camera. If I just click back. And then top right hand corner is the uh, the flop reader symbol to save. Give that a few seconds. This works exactly the same principle if you're using crosswire or uh, scene change or any of the IVS functionality. So if I exit all the way back out, as you can see, there's nothing set up there still. We'll exit the app. 
I'll now walk in through the facial detection camera it is. Give it a few seconds for it to recognize my face. As you can see, I have a push notification that says face detection. I hit that. As you can see there, um, I currently have myself in a database, so the image that's comparing the two is on the bottom left hand corner. It's in 99% accuracy. Um, as you can see, it says I'm male and I'm wearing glasses. Um, so if I can hit any one of them, there's a snapshot. There's the image that I captured and there's the image that I was associated with. Um, if I scroll down the bottom here, if I hit playback, it gives the ability to have the playback functionality of what it caught and how it caught the event. Give a few seconds for it to load. There's me chirping away. Give a few seconds. And there's the face detection. If I want to go back, there it is on my list. I'll have to remove my glasses now for the next test. As you can see, it will just, uh, differentiate between wearing glasses and not wearing glasses for the better detection. So give me a second. If I enter there. As you can see, my uh, event list has now grown. So I hit the, the list. As you can see, now it says the icon for glasses has been removed, and there's the capture rates again. Like I said, this works with any IVS setup. We have face detection on this module, but you can use IVS, tripwire, uh, scene change, whatever suits your requirements. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you require any further videos or help, you do have the guide in the settings tab again, the help section. Or obviously you can speak to the Prima Tech support guys or give us a call. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for further videos. Thank you for spending the time to watch this video today. Hopefully it's been helpful. Please interact with us. Again, in the bio below is a link to Almanac at Prima.co.uk. Please tell us your thoughts and feedback and also what you'd like any future videos on. As we're a multi-band distributor, it can be CCTV, Intruder, Access. You let us know. If you pick it, we we'll even send you a little goodie bag. Please interact with us. Let us know what your thoughts. See you next time. Cheers, guys.